Hello and welcome to the very first episode of I'd Buy That for a Dollar. I'm Jason Halls. This is a show where I go to the dollar store and I try to find DVDs or movies and I dissect them, review them, try to get through them. Anyway, the first movie on our show, The Mermaid's Curse. Take a good look at that. So this movie is directed by Louisa Warren, who has a long history a vast IMDb resume with a lot of movies with covers like this. This is, this is a little misleading, to be honest, because it's called The Mermaid's Curse, but there are no mermaids in it. If anything, the creature is a siren. She sings and lures people in to devour them. But really, sirens and mermaids are both half fish. There's definitely no half fish people. Let's talk about what works, what doesn't work. Pick this up at the local Dollar Tree. This was released in the UK and the original title was Witches of the Water, which honestly makes much more sense because in the film they are witches. They're not sirens or mermaids. Her song is alluring, her kiss is deadly. I guess that's kind of accurate actually. So let's, let's look at what this is about. After the discovery of an illicit affair, a journalist falls in love with a seductive, sultry, and young mermaid he meets on the beach. Not a mermaid. Infatuation turns into obsession as he gets drawn in by her powers. The more he falls for her, the more he will learn of the dangers of falling in love with a siren. So, okay, they're using siren and mermaid interchangeably here, which I guess is fine. But if you're interested, let's look at the differences in what a siren and a mermaid are. Who knows if this will get cut. In Greek mythology, the sirens were actually winged, half-human, half-bird creatures. According to literature, the sirens lived on an island near Cilia and Shark Char In most folklore, sirens have been shown singing songs. In most Greek and poet and tradition, the sirens were depicted as beautiful maidens that would sit half-naked on rocky shores. They would then lure the sailors to them using their beautiful singing voices, with the sailors following them not knowing that they are sailing into problems. A famous Greek folktale claimed that the sirens were fated to die if any mortal should hear them sing and live to tell the story. What are mermaids? In folklore, a mermaid is an aquatic creature with the head and upper body of a female human and the tail of a fish. Mermaids are usually depicted as peaceful, non-violent creatures that try to live their lives away from human interference. In some folklore, mermaids are sometimes associated with perilous events such as floods, storms, and shipwrecks, and drowning. All that information was from vivadifferences.com. Okay, so let's look at what worked here. The core mythology is pretty cool. It's a, about a journalist who is investigating missing people on a beach. He stumbles across this siren, and he falls in love with her. And, you know, the, the whole basic idea is pretty good. Um, the cinematography, the, from a technical standpoint, most, most of the technical stuff is pretty good. The sound is a little off in some places, I feel like. The sound of, like, the water and the ocean and the walking on the beach. The beach is just all rocks. It's not some nice sandy beach. It's, it's just all rocks. And in the first scene, there's, uh, you know, the, the lovemaking scene between two people at night on this rocky beach, and it looks very uncomfortable. You know, they're presenting these people as the first victims of the siren. The show is how the whole thing's going to work, right? And they don't look like they're into each other much at all. In fact, it's shot in such a way that, that you don't even see them kiss. You can kind of hear it, but it, you don't ever see them actually kiss. And they're supposed to be, you know coitus you don't see anything and it, it's it i just it felt like they were using actors who might not have i'm sure they were comfortable in the scene i'm sure they were there was nothing wrong going on but they went very light on the erotic nature of the scene also the mythology of the story is pretty cool it has to do with the salem witch trials these witches that were or people suspected of being witches captured and unfortunately brutalized 
and they were thrown out into the water to die. But I guess one of them, the, the main siren here, actually was a witch because she cast a spell, kept everybody alive, and now these women are feeding on people in, in, in this beach. And um, there was a decent twist in the story. You have your old sailor who knows what's going on and he's trying to tell people, but nobody really listens to him. And he keeps saying it's these sirens. That's why people are missing and nobody listens. Finally, somebody starts to listen to him. These reporters, they go to him and they ask him what's up and they say, oh my gosh, we need to stop these sirens. And he says, why would you do that? I worship them. He's a bad guy. I thought that twist worked pretty well. So there are some things in the movie that keep it going. Let's look at maybe what didn't work so well. There's not a lot of wide shots in the movie. Or at least that's how I remember it. I had a tough time with the geography of everything. Uh, where our journalist hero's apartment was, because I be it was on the beach. It was close to the beach. I know that because you could look out the window and see the, the ocean. Where everything was in relation to each other, I felt like wasn't always super clear. Like, where, what was this beach area like? It wasn't secluded. There were lots of buildings and stuff. Um, so I just, the establishment of the overall location, I think, could have used a little work. Not a big deal. I've seen worse, you know, but that's just something that stuck out to me a little bit. Okay, this is a big one. The siren makeup. I feel like this is a part where they should have spent a lot of money, and I don't think they did. The siren had these appendages put on at random spots on her face, and they look sort of like barnacles or, I don't know, it, it kind of looked more like a zombie than it did a siren, you know, because a siren, she's just supposed to be beautiful. And in some places, she doesn't have all that stuff on. So I feel like what would have worked better is if she would have looked normal, except for those moments right before she feeds, then she, you know, they get a glimpse of her true self or something, and she looks totally different. And, ah, and then you cut, you know, just like those little quick moments to show us that she just appears human, but she's not, would have worked better than having her sort of wide-eyed with these strange things on her face. Another thing that didn't work so well is the siren song. She's luring people in. She opens her mouth and she just kind of does this. It's like they didn't know what the song was going to be. So they just had the actress do that. And then they put in this melody in the soundtrack. And I couldn't tell if she was supposed to be singing that or if that was just something we were hearing as part of the music during those times. It almost seemed like at some parts, the only person who could hear her was the victim. And I'm into that. I think it should have been totally silent when she was singing. And uh, they just, uh, just the way she sang it, the way they had the actress mouth these uh, motions. It felt a little awkward. So I think there might have been a different way to handle that that would have made it seem more menacing. I don't, I don't know. Overall, the movie's not too bad. Uh, it's on Tubi. I started watching it pretty late at night uh, because I was finishing the book Alice Isn't Dead by Joseph Fink. I thought that was pretty interesting. Pretty great book. Kind of gave me Dark Conspiracy vibes, which is always welcome because Dark Conspiracy is my favorite role-playing game of all time. The Mermaid's Curse. Check it out. Maybe.